It's episode 96 of the Keto for Women show. You're listening to the Keto for Women show. This podcast provides the tools you need to create your own expression of a healthy ketogenic lifestyle so you can stop obsessing and start living. I'm your host and nutritionist, Sean Miner. Now let's get on with the show. We've got yet another brand to spotlight in this episode, and it's an important one because most of us are not thinking through the quality of the olive oil we are using. It's so important. I actually had no idea either until I became a nutritional therapy practitioner and understood how sensitive these fat sources are. In order to get the nutritional profile that we need and expect from olive oil, it has to be made from properly sourced olives that were harvested at the right time and with the right processing that's safe and gentle. And not only that, they are very sensitive to heat and light and need to be packaged appropriately too, which means a dark colored glass bottle. Now that I know this, when I walk through the olive oil section of the grocery store and see all of the clear plastic bottles, I get worried that's not the way it should be for the foods we are consuming, specifically the olive oil. The family behind Cassandrino's olive oil gets all of this. Growing up in Greece, they were surrounded by only the best olive oil and have now brought that pure Greek olive oil to the masses. They single source their olives from Laconia, Greece, where the olives are gently pressed within 24 hours of harvest, so each bottle is as fresh as it gets. This means you are actually getting the high nutrient level that olive oil should have with the assurance it hasn't been damaged like many olive oils out there. And you can taste the difference. Cassandrino's olive oil has incredible flavor and a super smooth consistency. It's a beautiful color too, which means it's high in nutrients. And you just don't see that in other olive oils these days. It's worth it to know more about your olive oil and invest in the highest quality you can find. Cassandrino's is that company for me, and maybe it will be for you too. Support this family-owned and operated company who's doing it right in a sea of big brands doing it all wrong. Head to seanminer.com slash olive oil to shop Cassandrino's olive oil. That's seanminer.com slash olive oil. Hey, hey, friends. Welcome back. Thanks, as always, for joining me on this episode of Keto for Women. We are continuing on with our best of Keto for Women series We have another one of the most popular episodes of the past 100 Keto for Women episodes, a favorite of mine to record and a favorite of yours for sure to listen to. I have gotten so much feedback from this episode, so many people going back and re-listening to this episode because they need it and it might just be that way for you today. We are taking it back to episode number 60 22 signs you are ketoing too hard. And this is something I was just really passionate to share. It took a little while for me to gather these 22 signs, but it was just things that I was continuously seeing women do to themselves or their bodies or their diets complain about because it wasn't working, they weren't feeling good. And I started to figure it out People were just ketoing too hard. Maybe you just need to back off a little bit. So we're going to go through those signs again for you today. Maybe you will recognize some new signs in yourself that you didn't when you heard this the first time, and it may be time to make some changes. All right, let's hear this episode. The topic of today is signs you may be ketoing too hard. I chose this topic, as I said, super last minute. I was going to talk about something else today, but I just kind of was realizing that so much of what I talk about on this show and just in my social media posts and videos and everything else I do is these things that may be going on with your health and are keeping you from feeling as good as you could. So I have the Keto Roadblock series, which is the video series where I'm talking about all the other things why you're in ketosis and not feeling great or not experiencing the benefits of ketosis. There's a tons of other reasons that I go through in that roadblock series, but I've also talked about here. It's just these other health issues that are outstanding that keto really can bring to light, which is so awesome. And there's honestly 
many, many of you listening as women have these issues going on. But there's also times, and I don't think I talk about this enough. Maybe I do, but it always bears repeating. There's also times when you're just ketoing too hard. You're just really trying this thing too hard, and it's causing these same issues or similar things as to where you don't feel like you're doing keto correctly or you're not experiencing what you need to experience or want to experience and things just aren't going as well as you thought. And it's just because you're doing it too hard. You're just trying too hard. And, you know, I think this is a really common thing that I see, of course, which is why I have this whole podcast episode and where I got this entire list is just based on these comments and questions that I get all the time daily of women wondering what they're doing wrong. And it's literally, they're just trying too hard. So we're going to go through this list of these signs that may be you just trying too hard so that you know if that's something that's going on for you. But I think it's really common in this group of women. We are women who are really focused on our health. We really want to do the right thing. We want to get well. We want to get healthy. We want to lose weight. We want to be the best we can be. So we effort everything and we're used to efforting everything. I think really that's just kind of the overall consensus of today's female society is just all this effort to be the best mom, to be the best boss, to be the best employee, to be the best wife, just all of these things. We just are trying so hard. So then we also try really hard for our health, which is great. And we do all the tests. We listen to all the podcasts. We watch all the webinars we try every diet, we try every supplement, we do all of the things to be the best at our health. But a lot of times that keeps us in this cycle of not being truly healthy because it's hard. It's stressful. It's hard on our body. It's keeping us in this cycle. It's just too much. And I see this so much. I've always seen this before I was keto. You know, even when I was a trainer, I saw this with my clients and just efforting so hard to try to get to that goal, to that desired weight, to that desired strength level, all this stuff. And it's just overtakes everything. You know, it takes over our thoughts and our emotions and our time and energy and everything to the point where it's detrimental. And that could be what's going on for you and keto is it's just taken over. It's taken over. It's gone a little too far you have all the best intentions in the world for going keto, getting your health back, being the healthiest you can be, which is obviously amazing and the best goal that you can have. But in the process, it's gone a little too far. And now you're struggling again, or you haven't gotten to that point where you want to get or your health is still in question or these things that you thought you would be healing or getting worse or aren't getting better, or now you have new symptoms coming up that you've never had before. And it could quite honestly be just because you need to take a little bit of a breather from keto. So of course, why am I this huge keto advocate, which I absolutely am, and I think you all know that, telling you to just step away from keto. Why would I ever tell you that? It's not because I don't think that you should be doing a keto diet. That is not it at all. I think most people on this planet would benefit very, very highly from keto. What I'm telling you to do is to not let it take over everything in your life, not let it be as much in the forefront as it maybe currently is for you, not let it be something that's taking over all your thoughts and your time and, and energy and actions and all those things because you're going to be perpetuating the cycle. So let's go over. I made a list this morning of 22 signs that you might be ketoing too hard. So I'm going to go through them. We'll go through them kind of quickly. I'll give a little background on why I say what I say. And you can see if any of these resonate with you or someone you know, or maybe it did at the beginning and then you found your groove and now you no longer have these issues. So you can relate in that regard. But Let's just go through them because I think it might be interesting to note some of the similarities between this list and some of the lists I give when I say you might have another health issue underlying that you don't know about that's causing these things. They're very similar. So let's do it. 
one more quick thing before I get into it. I do want to remind you that this is not just for the ladies who are just starting keto. This can also be something and very, very often, like I would say over half of the emails and questions I get where I get background, it is something where that person was feeling really good with keto for a month or two, and then all of a sudden things started crumbling. And now these things are showing up. And really, that's almost more common because, you know, your body takes a little bit of time before like that stress of it just is too much. And then you really start showing these signs that you were ketoing too hard, probably the entire time. So keep in mind, it's not just for these people who are just starting like a couple weeks ago and they're going, it's just keto flu and whatever. It's not that. It's actually more so for the people who maybe you're even doing keto right now and just started and you feel great, still be on the lookout for these signs. Or maybe you started keto a few months ago and now things are starting to decline. Is it because you're ketoing too hard? All right, let's find out. The first one, of course, have to talk about this because it's keto for women and something that is hugely hugely on my mind for you is that your menstrual cycles have changed. So if you are currently menstruating and you lose your period, your periods become irregular, they become more painful or more prominent PMS, those things are showing that you could be ketoing too hard. So of course, if you came to keto with some sort of hormonal imbalance, which is hugely common, It could also just be that that transition period is kind of bringing that to the surface and eventually keto will actually really help to regulate your hormones, which is awesome because it will show up in your menstrual cycle. But if you're ketoing too hard, then you will see a change in your menstrual cycle, especially after the first month. So there's kind of some expectation that you might see a little bit of a wonky cycle for month one, but then after that, you should regulate. And if you don't, you're ketoing too hard, quite possibly. If you are not menstruating, if you are postmenopausal or going through menopause right now or have a menorrhea on the pill, whatever, and you're not menstruating, you will still see signs potentially of changes in your hormones. So changing in your hormones when you aren't menstruating would still be even having like PMS type symptoms at certain times of the month, having an increase in like menopausal symptoms like hot flashes, night sweats, those things that we commonly expect women to feel somewhat going through menopause. You may see increases in those and those are just things that you kind of have to look for a little more intently if you aren't having a menstrual cycle because those would be a little less obvious, of course, than menstruating once a month, but you should still be able to pick out if you're having changes in your hormones. Number two, you're losing hair. We talk about this a lot on Keto for Women. It's a super huge topic in the keto community because there are so many women losing hair and that is not okay. That is not normal. That is not something that is expected when you are ketoing correctly It is expected when you are ketoing too hard. So that is a huge, huge sign for me. If someone's losing hair, that they really jumped the gun. They got into things a little too quickly, a little too seriously, not enough fat, not in ketosis, not enough food, fasting too soon, all those things that is essentially ketoing too hard. If you're losing hair, huge sign. And keep in mind, losing hair is based on a stressful event that happened two to three months prior. So you may not lose hair until a few months after you start keto. So make sure you go back and think about that time if you do start seeing hair loss. Number three, you're exhausted. Of course, one of the biggest benefits of ketosis is having this awesome energy. If you aren't having that, of course, could be a lot of reasons, but might just be that you're ketoing too hard. Maybe you're not fueling your body enough, giving yourself enough energy, expecting that this fat adaptation has already happened and it hasn't. You know, there's a lot of possibilities there, but you might just need to keto a little less hard. And we'll talk about that, what that means. Don't worry. Number four, you're losing muscle and momentum in your workouts. So I think that this is, at least as far as the momentum in your workouts goes, I think that's to be expected and pretty common in the first maybe month 
of your keto transition. But beyond that, you should start feeling increases in your ability to get through a workout, your endurance, your strength. All these things should start to increase slowly, but increase as you become more keto adapted. If you notice yourself not gaining in your workouts and even worse, starting to lose muscle mass, you definitely could be ketoing too hard. Number five, your thyroid markers are declining. So of course, these are the markers we talk about most commonly here on the Keto for Women show, which would be TSH, free T4, and free T3. So those are the typical thyroid hormones that show your active thyroid support. And in keto, they can decline, specifically that free T3 can temporarily decline while you're making the keto transition. But if you are fueling your body properly, getting enough nutrition and nourishment, not fasting when you're not ready to fast, all these things we talk about here on KFW, if you are doing that, then it should regulate itself. It should pop back up, get to that normal zone where you feel comfortable. If that doesn't happen over the course of several months and you're monitoring it and you have this low thyroid function, you might be ketoing too hard. Number six, you're weight loss resistant. Of course, a huge, huge topic in keto for women, something we talk about here a lot, something we talk about in the Fat Burning Female Project a lot. Why are you not losing weight? Keto is supposed to make you lose weight, right? No, of course. We know that now. We know that just based on everything we've talked about here on the show. But one of the reasons, and there's many, we know that there's many reasons health related that might be why you're not losing weight. But one of them could be just that you're trying too dang hard. You are expecting it to happen. You are restricting even further when it doesn't happen. You're causing a huge metabolic mess. And you are making yourself weight loss resistant because you're just trying too hard, not to mention all the stress that you're outputting and the cortisol that's going into this stress response that's keeping you stuck. So keep that in mind. Number seven, you're not sleeping. Ooh, so huge. This is a really big one because what I see, and as I've mentioned, I get a lot of my information about what works and what doesn't with women in keto through my own basically mini experiment I have going on with the ladies in the Fat Burning Female Project. Of course, I don't want to say it's an experiment because I know what to expect and I know what's going to happen and I know how to help these women. But it's still, it's so nice to see this validation time and time again where women who go through the Fat Burning Female Project and make sure that they are getting into ketosis slowly and safely they're eating enough food, they're getting the nutrients. So we're eating real nutrient dense foods and not weird keto products. (laughs) And really making sure we're doing everything safely. One of the quickest things that they see change is the quality of their sleep, like within days. And then, you know, seeing women struggle with their sleep who are trying to go and make this keto transition a little too hardcore, their sleep suffers. I see it all the time. So that is a huge sign that you are causing a lot of stress in your body and that stress response, that cortisol response is waking you up at night. It's also a sign that your blood sugar is taking a toll too. So you might still have some blood sugar issues that need to be healed, which of course keto will do, but you might also not be eating enough fat or not eating enough carbs or not eating enough protein or too much of any of those, or not enough food overall, which is what I see most commonly. You're just not eating enough food, and that's showing up as a blood sugar response as well at night. So remember that if you're having sleep issues. Number eight, you're irritable. Of course, another huge benefit that we expect to see when we go keto is this mood stabilization because we are stabilizing our blood sugar, which is very commonly associated with how we feel emotionally and just fueling our bodies appropriately, getting into this better metabolic state with our fat burning and everything we expect to see, and that doesn't happen. So if that doesn't happen and you still feel yourself being irritable towards others or just you know not in the best mood, finding your moods to be changing quite a bit, fluctuating all over, then you might just need to back off from keto a little bit. 
Number nine, you have no interest in sex. So the libido changes. If your libido declines when you are keto, something's up. Because I can tell you from all the women in the class that one of the best things that they notice for themselves and their partners is this huge increase in libido. And that's just because you are regulating your hormones. You're getting those hormones back up to where they should be after probably years of having just low hormones of some sort, whether it be all, whether it be estrogen, whether progesterone, testosterone. Testosterone in particular is very much a part of a healthy libido. And a lot of women are very low in testosterone. So just being keto in a safe, healthy keto place can really boost that up quickly. So if you're not seeing that happen, or if it's declining, then it could simply be because you are just ketoing too hard. Number 10, you are bloated or water retained. So this is not something I think is commonly seen to be a possibility of ketoing too hard, but it is. And that really comes from the stress response involved in trying to do anything too hard. Because we talk about cortisol a lot, but that stress hormone cortisol, the adrenals will start secreting it more and it will show up as water retention and bloating because that is also responsible for your electrolyte balance, your salt water balance. And you will notice that that's not happening as balanced as it used to be or should be. And it's simply a stress response caused by ketoing too hard. Number 11, you're hungry. So we're moving on to those 10 were kind of like signs from your body. Now we're looking at signs from your brain, (laughs) essentially, or your thoughts around food, feelings around food. Actually, let me do number 11 and number 12 combined. You're hungry or you're never hungry because I think both of these are equally as important. And I think there's a lot of touting that goes on in the keto community about never being hungry. And I don't think that's a good thing. I really don't. I mean, I think that it's great to be able to go a few hours without eating. Yes. So to be able to go from lunch at noon until dinner at six or seven and not have to have these breaks for snacks or feel senses of hunger or anything like that. I think that's great. And I think that is a really good spot to be. I would say that that's a normal response. But To go beyond that and to not be hungry for 16 hours a day, I don't know. I I would be concerned about the metabolic capacity and what's actually happening with your metabolic function for your body to not want nutrition. Again, don't have any science or anything to back that up, but it just doesn't seem intuitively right to me. So, of course, there's so much going on about, oh, I fasted for this time and I wasn't hungry at all and I never get hungry on keto. I only have to eat one meal a day and I don't know. I think especially for women, I'm not convinced that that's a good place to be. I think you should be in a spot of being hungry sometimes. I think that's a very normal, good reaction that's showing that your body is burning through what it needs to burn through and it needs nourishment. It needs nutrition. It needs nutrients, micro and macro nutrients to be the best that it can be. So I'm talking about number 12 here and never being hungry. I think that might be a sign that you are just not eating enough or eating frequently enough. You're trying to fast a lot. And so you've downregulated your metabolic capacity. If you're always hungry, I think, you know, especially towards the beginning, you are probably not giving your body what it needs and what it wants. And it's given you the signs that it needs and wants more nutrients and you're ignoring it. And so it's often a case where you start out being hungry all the time and then you go into never being hungry because that's when that metabolic downgrade takes effect. So you're hungry, you're ignoring it because you're supposed to be keto, which means you're supposed to never be hungry. And then you, it actually happens, but it's not necessarily the best thing to where you're never hungry. So if you can be in this spot where you eat when you're hungry, you eat enough food, you provide the nourishment, the nutrients that your body needs on a daily basis, you will find that you're hungry when you should be hungry 
and you're not hungry after you've eaten or when you're not supposed to be hungry. You're just on this really regular cycle of normal hunger cues. That's what you want. You want normal, regular hunger cues. You don't want to be in the spot of always or never. Of course, the case with most things, we don't want to be to any extreme. We just want to be somewhere in the middle where we're normally hungry. So if you're in either of those extreme categories, maybe ketoing a little too hard. Number 13, you have cravings. So I think this comes about as a mental thing that happens when you have told yourself you're going to diet. So this would more so come if you are ketoing too hard as a new diet plan. Because as I've mentioned many times on the show, what I see cravings to be is an unresolved mental component to your dieting tendencies. Because you've told yourself, this food is off limits. This is my favorite food. I can't ever have it. It's a no-no on the keto diet. And I'm the same way. If you tell me that I can never have this cookie again, and I, like I said at the beginning, cookies are so sweet now that I don't want them. But if you told me you can never have this again, all I want is that cookie. That is all I will think about. I will crave that cookie. I will think it's going to be the best thing ever. It's going to taste so good, but I can't have it. So I just have to live without it. And it perpetuates this cycle to where all I want is that cookie. And then, of course, if you actually eat it, it doesn't even taste that good, right? So if you are still in this place where you are craving things, of course, there is a really nice, awesome thing about keto is the balancing of the blood sugar that truly does eliminate your desire for a lot of sweet treats. But beyond that, there's also a mental component. You haven't really taken the time to understand the keto lifestyle, to understand the difference between things being a diet and things being a lifestyle and making those changes mentally. And that is something I talk about a lot here, but if we need a whole nother episode, I'm happy to do that. So I think really taking that time to see this as something that there aren't any food labels, then that becomes a lot easier. And those cravings melt away because you know that there aren't any foods you can't have. You're just making a choice of whether you want it or not every time that comes into your life. And sometimes you might, and sometimes you won't. And that's a lifestyle. So this is where ketoing too hard becomes this mental game that we play that we haven't quite taken a step back from yet. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Number 14 kind of goes hand in hand. You're having carb binges. So I think this could go a couple ways. I think it could go again that you're in this diet mentality with keto and you're really like you started on Monday, you're gung ho, you're going to do this. You're not ever going to cheat. You're going to make all this food and prep and you're never going to have sugar again and all carbs are bad. (laughs) So you're only going to eat protein and fat for the rest of your life. You know, those kinds of things that we tell ourselves and this dieting space that really can kind of throw a wrench into our mental plans because those thoughts are what will for sure end up in some sort of craving or carb binge or something like that. So I think that it could come from the overstepping of all the rules and ketoing too hard as far as just being 100% into all the rules for sure forever going to do this die hard dieter, then it's going to potentially lead to a carb binge because you've told yourself you can't. It could also lead to a carb binge if you're ketoing too hard because maybe you're just not eating enough carbs. Maybe you're way too low carb. Maybe your body wants a little bit more carb. Then instead of acknowledging that and doing something about it and having a little bit more sweet potato or something a couple times a week, you just eat all the carbs at once. And instead of making it a really healthy, great nutrient dense choice, like a sweet potato or plantain or squash or something like that, it's cake and chips and cookies and crackers and all of this processed crappy garbage, right? So 
I see that a lot just by there not being enough overall good nutrient dense carbs in this healthy keto diet that you can have. So that could be a reason why too. Either way, we may be ketoing too hard. Number 15, all you think about is food. This is a big one that I can totally relate to. And this really comes, again, like I mentioned at the beginning, because we want to do it right and we want to do it well and we want to take care of ourselves and be on this diet and fix our health issues and lose weight and all this stuff. So we are gung-ho about doing it perfectly, putting all our effort into it, and then it's all we think about. So we think about what we're going to make for dinner, then we think about what we're going to have for breakfast, and we think about where we're going to go over the weekend so we can have a keto-friendly meal out at a restaurant. And then we start calculating our food and getting back on our app and see how many carbs we can have for dinner and pre-planning our meals for the next day, totally based on our macros and just constant food, 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 keto, 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 keto. And it's all we're thinking about. I've been there. I was there for so, so long in my days as a trainer when I was kind of more of a bodybuilder type diet quote unquote healthy, which I now realize was not at all. I had lots of blood sugar issues back then that I didn't recognize, but it really is this really bad place to be because one thing I believe so wholeheartedly is that we all think about food way too much, especially those of us listening to Keto for Women who really want to take charge of our health and happiness and food is a great place to do that. And we recognize that but there's so much more to life. There is so much more to think about and to have fun doing and to learn about and just explore. You know, there's just a lot of things that we could potentially be missing out on in life and living life to the fullest and enjoying every moment because we're a little too focused on our food. We're spending a little too much time counting our macros on our apps and wondering what we're doing right and wondering what we're doing wrong and ketoing harder. I kind of had to shake myself out of this pattern also when I was so sick and I just lost so much joy in my life because I was so sick. And so now I vow to never be that way again. If you follow me on Instagram, if you see my stories, you know that I'm outside a lot. I'm doing fun things. I'm out with my friends. I'm enjoying life. I'm not here sitting thinking about food or keto or anything like that, except as far as my career goes, of course, and helping other women. But, you know, I'm not here obsessing about my own diet because there's so much more that I want to be doing. And I don't want to miss any more opportunities to fully enjoy life. And you might find that thinking about food is enjoying. I agree to a an extent. I love to cook. I love chopping vegetables. I love making food. I love being in the kitchen. It's one of my favorite things. It's very stress relieving for me. It helps me get into my zone. So there's a difference between that and just really having a hobby versus overthinking it because you want to do it right. You're trying to do the best you can. You're thinking a little too much about what's going in your mouth, what's going on your plate and how well you're doing at keto. So you might be ketoing too hard if you're constantly thinking about keto or just food overall. Number 16, you think real food carbs are bad. So again, very similar conversation to the other ones we just had. But when we get into this place and I see it happen with, you know, real food carbs. And by that, I mean, like the ones I mentioned, sweet potato, plantain, squash, fruit, those Foods that come from nature that have a higher carb content, like animal products. So that's kind of what I mean. I don't mean crackers, cookies, cakes, those kind of things. So obviously, we know that real food carbs, that's what I'm talking about. But I also see this happen with protein. We start almost demonizing protein too, because we've heard so much that we really have to regulate our protein intake to truly get into ketosis and to be keto. So all of a sudden, we are scared of all food except fat, basically. And that's not a healthy place to be. And so if you have started in this spot, and you probably didn't even do it intentionally, you didn't go into this thinking carbs are bad. You just went into this thinking, I'm going to be keto. 
But then all of a sudden, this mental change happens to where we start getting scared of foods that aren't fat. And we start really trying to control them. And I think that mental space that you just got into this keto headspace, and now it's gotten a little bit extreme. And we've demonized really healthy, really nutrient dense foods that are not, for the most part, going to harm your body. So if you have done that, maybe time to back out a little bit and keto a little less hard. Number 17, you limit your veggie servings. So same deal. I see this with veggies a lot. People are scared, again, of anything that's not fat. So now you're having one serving of veggies a day, and it's the same veggie every day. And so you're really losing out on some important micronutrients that would come from having a larger amount of veggie servings in your day, having different veggie servings in your day. And those micronutrients are really, really important for our overall health as a woman. So again, we're so excited and gung-ho about being keto and getting the right keto numbers and feeling amazing that we forget about nutrients and we forget about food as medicine. So it's not necessarily, of course, ketone producing, great, also medicine, but food is also medicine, right? So there has to be that happy balance and limiting your nutrient dense foods is a sign you're ketoing too hard. It's brand spotlight time on this episode. This one has been around in my world for a very long time and has pulled me out of some tough situations. It's the herbal remedy brand Wish Garden Herbs. I turn to Wish Garden tinctures for pretty much everything. When I'm getting sick, when I can't sleep, when I'm in a bad mood, when I'm stressed, when my stomach is upset, literally everything. They have one for every single thing you could ever be going through. Wish Garden has a special place in my heart ever since I went to tour the facility as they are a Boulder-based company. And I learned from the actual herbalist herself, the founder of the company, Catherine, all about what they do, what they use, why they use it, and why they do what they do. And it was absolutely fascinating. This truly is a company with heart. Their blends are each small batch crafted with the cleanest, most potent ingredients Mother Nature has to offer. They are organic and sustainably wild harvested. Catherine and her team of herbalists formulate each one carefully to maximize function for whatever is ailing you. What this all really means is that they work. They are so impressive. I can't even explain it. You just have to try it. The next time you have an ailment or something you want help with, with your health, these tinctures will replace any of the potentially harmful over-the-counter medications currently going on in your medicine cabinet. I am confident of that. They even have remedies for kids that is a super popular line for them as well. If you're not already a fan, you will be soon. Head to seanminer.com slash wishgarden and support this female-owned family-run business. Again, that's seanminer.com slash wishgarden. 18. You know exactly how many carbs and net carbs you eat every single day. So this goes back to just really overthinking it all, really using those apps a little too much, making food a calculation instead of what it is, which I've always said is a combination of nourishment and pleasure. It's truly what I think food is because food tastes good. Keto foods are the best tasting foods in my opinion. So it's pleasurable to eat and it should be. It shouldn't be, okay, I have this many net carbs. I can eat the rest of the day. So this is what I'm going to have. It just, when we make this calculation, we are missing the point in a major, major way. Number 19, you're going through ketone test strips quicker than bacon strips. So this is one I see all the time and I have to keep reminding ladies in the project, you don't need to test your ketones every single day. You definitely don't need to be testing them multiple times a day. That's just a recipe for total confusion. So if you are over testing it's because you're over ketoing. Just relax on the test strips, test a few times a week, give yourself a break, save the money because they're not the cheapest things in the world. And don't go through those (laughs) test strips so quickly. And if you are, you're ketoing too hard. Number 20, you're doing everything right in air quotes and still not in ketosis. So I see it all the time. We back away from keto and live our lives a little bit and we get into ketosis. 
If you're overthinking it and you're not in ketosis, just don't think about it so much. Take a break from testing. Take a break from calculating and and wondering what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. And then give it a few weeks and test again. You'd be surprised at what you see. This is 21, almost there. You haven't had a conversation with your family in months because you're too busy listening to keto podcasts. This is something I brought up on the panel at KetoCon when I was back a few months ago there because someone was talking about or asked a question about how to find out more information. And I don't even remember what the question was, but my answer was listen to music instead of podcasts. Now, of course, I have a keto podcast. And of course, I want you all to listen every week. But if it's causing you to be totally stressed out, then don't. And I hope that that's doing the opposite. That's why I have this podcast is to just kind of remind you that it doesn't have to be so hard and it doesn't have to be so stressful and it's okay if you're not perfect on keto and it's okay if you don't feel the greatest on keto, all these things that we talk about here on KFW. So of course, I want you to keep listening, but I also want you to do something else, to have another hobby, to have something else going on, to enjoy time with your friends and family, to get back to talking to your friends and family a little more, to get back to listening to music. That is something that I've done in the past probably six months or so. I used to be a podcast fiend, like nonstop listening to podcasts all day, every day, all the time in the car. And now I listen to music in the car. I never listen to podcasts because I love music too. I love finding new music. I tell you, getting a membership to Spotify has totally changed the game for me in music. I think it's great and it gets me in a really good mood. And so, you know, maybe that's something you could do where you spend maybe even just an hour less or so a week researching and watching the videos and reading the blogs and listening to the podcasts and do something else. Find a new hobby. Find something else to research and learn about. Get out of the space just a hair, but don't stop listening to Keto for Women. I'll still be here. Last one, 22. You don't go to restaurants or social functions because you don't know what you'll eat. So this was kind of why I started the podcast, talking about what I brought and made for my sister's birthday party. And it's just a reminder that you know, if you feel like you can't live the life that you had prior to keto while being keto, you're doing it too hard. You should never have to compromise your connections because of a diet of any sort or really anything that you do to change your health status. You should be able to do both. You should be able to continue your friendships, continue seeing your family, continue making new friends, going and doing all the things and still be keto. And maybe that means that you're not perfect. If that's what allows you to continue the social life that you had is that you're not perfect when you're out, that's okay. But maybe you'll find that you can. You can do both. You can eat what you want to eat. You can stay in ketosis. You can stay away from the cupcakes and still keep your friendships because that's more than likely going to be the case. I mean, if you have friends that won't be friends with you unless you're not keto, you might want to rethink those friendships. It should be a supportive situation. But I think that if you're scared to do any of those things or to go to your favorite restaurants or whatever, then you might just be thinking about keto a little too hard. So now that we've gone through this list and you might have noticed some of these things in yourself and now you're thinking, well, what does it mean to keto too hard and how do I unketo hard? (laughs) And really, I'm not telling you to get out of ketosis. That is not the point of this topic. I think what I'm telling you to do is to remind yourself of what you're actually trying to do. What you're actually trying to do is to get healthy and stay healthy by maybe prevent future health complications, maybe reverse out of current health issues. Of course, any number of things that we have going on, we all have different goals in mind, but we have those goals. So when you are doing keto as we are in this space for a health purpose, keto is a means to get there, but not if it's going to be stressful, not if it's going to be something that is an obsessive component to your life. So getting healthy is the goal. Having a certain ketone number is not the goal. Having a bad relationship with food is not the goal. Having a poor relationship with your body is not the goal. Those things are not healthy and we want to get healthy. So it seems like 
ketoing too hard is perpetuating this state of unhealthiness if those things are happening. So we just need to work on the relationship with our body, work on the relationship with our food, work on the relationship with the stress that we cause ourselves and do that work as well as be keto perhaps. So in that regard, you're not spending so much time thinking about the food on your plate, the ketone numbers you're getting, the weight you're not losing, the benefits you're not seeing, but you're understanding, you're taking time to just learn more about your body overall. You're eating foods that you know make you feel good. You are having carbs if carbs sound good. You're having these real food, nutrient-dense carbohydrates sometimes. You're having more protein because you've started noticing some muscle loss and you want to regain that. So you're having more protein. You're just taking a few steps back from everything you think you should be doing and focusing more on the end goal, which is your health. So maybe that does mean that you're backing all the way out of ketosis for a little bit and you're kind of getting a better relationship with food first. You're working on reversing out of that diet mentality so that you can go back into keto with a better relationship with this idea of it being a lifestyle and then you won't get into the spot of ketoing so hard. So I just have this conversation with you to make you aware that it's more of this full spectrum of things that you are doing for your mind, body, health, soul, spirit, all of the things. It's this full spectrum of just getting to know you and your body better and not just ketoing as hard as you possibly can because that's going to fix everything because it's not. And so I think that's kind of the like soapbox thing I wanted to say. But then also I want to just, you know, basic, if you're ketoing too hard, it's more than likely because you are not eating enough food. So you've taken to fasting a little too soon. You're scared to eat food. So you are only eating fat or something like that. And your overall amount on your plate isn't enough. You potentially aren't even in ketosis. So you're causing this low carb purgatory. You've gone into keto a little too fast, a little too quickly. So that could mean you're actually physically ketoing too hard and too soon for your body. You know, all the things that we talk about all the time here on Keto for Women and the reason why I have the Fat-Burning Female Project and Self-Study so that you don't do that, (laughs) so that there is no ketoing too hard. That's exactly what I'm trying to negate in everything that I do with this show and with my courses. So it could be something as simple as that and you haven't made it a lifestyle and all these things that we're talking about, but it could also be that you are focusing on keto when you really need to be focusing on so many other things and all these other relationships going on with you and your body and food and and these other things. So there's just a lot. And I know that that got a little deep, but I do see that so often we almost use keto and ketoing too hard as a band-aid to not look into the deeper issues, to not look into the other stuff that's going on to where we have to control our food. We have to do whatever diet like insert diet here, too hard. We have to keep overthinking and overanalyzing and just really controlling something. And so now we control our food. This is a really common thing, really common in keto. And then we start experiencing all of this negative stuff. So I have 22 things I could have kept going, but I just eventually thought 22 was enough for an hour. You know, there's so many things that we experience physically, mentally, emotionally, these negative symptoms that happen because we're doing anything too hard because we're controlling too much. So just take a step back, find some other things to do, start a new hobby, get off the app and just learn how to eat intuitively. Listen to your body, see what it wants to have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Really get to know what you actually truly crave. Just take the time to do it all. It makes such a big difference And then you know you can be in this for the lifestyle, which is what we are really trying to do here. Okay, that's it for today. I hope that made sense. I know it was a lot, but maybe you found that in yourself. Of course, if you think this episode or any episode of the Keto for Women show 
would be good for a friend or a family member that you know, please make sure to share it. That is really the best way that we all can be part of this amazing keto movement that's happening right now. We can all have little chunks of success story in us by sharing it with others that could benefit. So I would love for you to do that. And with that, I will see you all next week. Bye-bye. 